<laughs> Welcome back everyone. In this video, all the battery powered stuff. Uh, starting off with basic USB rechargeable stuff, that's easy. Uh, how I've hacked battery operated things to be USB rechargeable. And lastly, some uh, 12 volt stuff uh, that I've standardized connectors on to make it uh, more useful for us on the road. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, USB rechargeable stuff. It's pretty basic, doesn't really need an explanation, but I'll elaborate just a little bit if you'll let me. Uh, I've set up this drawer as a USB charge station for all things USB. Uh, I've got a 12 volt to 5 volt 5 amp regulator that feeds some of these items uh, just with basic 5 volts but some newer things like telephones and power delivery option units need 9 volts and other fancy power. So that's what this uh, charger is here. It takes 12 volts in and provides power delivery USB, which is, you know, the fast charge for newer phones. So that's the power supply side. Then I've got some things like our little Bluetooth speaker. Uh, it has a little holster. Uh, so it can just set on there and plug in, and then up here at the front, uh, uh, wireless charging pods for our uh, phones. Those are really nice just to throw your phone in, close the drawer and go to sleep. And then uh, some other stuff like uh, micro USB, and we use that to plug in things, and then I've got all sorts of other USB-C connections and so on in here. And then uh, now let's jump up back to the table and I'll show you some of the devices. All right, let's blow through some of this USB stuff really quick here. Uh, firstly, the, the older style standard for USB is micro USB. And uh, that is the standard that's used on our uh, 18650 charger that's uh, running our gimbal. And uh, I also use these batteries for all sorts of other uh, hackery, which you'll see here in a bit. Next is our old school GoPro. It also has a USB, uh, rather a micro USB connection. Many of our battery chargers for our bigger cameras, also micro USB. Some uh, Bluetooth earbuds, great for running or working out. Next is this uh, ARB PureView 800 flashlight. It's got this uh, spinning ring and it's a really amazing flashlight, super bright, also micro USB powered. Next is this uh, little gimbal Kara uses for her phone, just for run, run and gun type stuff, also micro USB. These are really handy too. Uh, we picked up a set of two of these USB rechargeable little lights and uh, they have two functions. The top glows bright white obviously and has dimmable modes and the bottom section has uh, UV uh, LEDs in there and bug zappers. Uh, and it of course is uh, USB rechargeable also. Um, this one's currently dead so time for a recharge. All right, the next standard is USB-C. This is the newer, better, in my opinion, standard uh, that's on most modern phones these days. So obviously uh, the phone uh, connector uses that. Also our new action camera, as you can see, and our wireless mic sets, also USB-C. Nothing too amazing there, but uh, just thought I'd show that as an overview. Now let's get into the hacked stuff. All right, so next are things that weren't designed to be USB rechargeable. These are the Black Thigh bug zappers. And uh, some time ago I opened it up, modified it, and put in a single 18650 lithium battery uh, holster like this. And that worked great. Uh, it went for many months without needing to be recharged. But I have these... Uh, USB, micro USB, uh, lithium battery charge controllers and I've been carrying them so I figured I'm going to modify some of this other stuff here this week and uh, make it USB rechargeable. So all that I needed to do for that was uh, just solder the wires to the battery just for a little extra room. Uh, there wasn't room for both the charge controller and the battery holster in this handle. 
So I've just hardwired, soldered it on, soldered in the uh, the USB charger, and I just need to affix this in here with double-sided tape or epoxy, which I'll show in just a moment. Another great hack for these black fly uh, bug zappers, and probably any bug zapper, is there's a uh, 47 mega ohm resistor across the outputs right near the uh, the big charge capacitor here. And if you just clip this lead and disconnect it, that will increase the power quite a bit. Uh, and it removes the safety, unfortunately. So when you disconnect the button, or when you stop pressing the button, the uh, the uh, grid stays charged and energized long after. I can demonstrate for you. Uh, another side effect of lithium on these uh, controllers is uh, they were designed for 3 volts, so running it at 3.7, it's hot. That is to say, it's angry all the time. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's buzzing and uh, displeased with the world, but when you hit a bug, it vaporizes it, even the big boys. So a uh, side effect of cutting that resistor, it's a lot more powerful, but it stays charged. So uh, just be aware of that, that when you set it down, you can place your hand on it and it will get you. All right, another thing we carry around that is battery operated are these Philips Sonicare toothbrushes. Uh, they charge just by setting on top of these uh, the base uh, charger here, but these are 110 powered, and I really dislike that because uh, then we need to have our inverter running, which wouldn't be so bad, except these uh, toothbrushes take about 10 hours to charge, and so just to have this sitting on the counter for 10 hours with the inverter running seemed inefficient. Also, because it's just sitting on this base, um, we can't have that driving down the road. And so uh, I went ahead and opened it up, as you can see here, and uh, I tested the capacity of the battery. It's still at uh, over 500 milliamps, which is basically what they're spec'd at. Um, and so I ran a discharge test on it. It ran for 70 some minutes at uh, 500 milliamps. And so the battery is good. Uh, and so then I went ahead and tested with a USB uh, charge circuit that I've shown you here already, and it charges just fine. And so then I uh, trimmed this board to be round so that it'll fit in the butt end of the toothbrush, and uh, tested that it's still charged overnight, and it did. So I'm going to uh, put this USB charge circuit in the butt end of the toothbrush and put it all back together. And while it's true, you can get uh, Philips Sonicare toothbrushes with little travel cases uh, that are really nice uh, induction charging inside of the case via USB. Uh, I'd love to have them, but they're 250 or $300 each, and uh, if I was buying a toothbrush new or buying these again, I would certainly buy the upgraded model that has that functionality. Uh, but like I said, these, even though they're old, they're maybe five or six, seven years old already, um, their battery capacity is still full and they work great. And these uh, USB recharge circuits are to the uh, 50 cents a piece. So uh, for a quick little mod, and it's fun to do, uh, I'll have uh, that USB functionality anyway. So before you comment telling me that they exist, I know um, I'm just modding something we already had. Next is uh, bigger power consumption devices, uh, namely our little Dyson cordless SVAC. It uh, has a five cell lithium pack in there. Uh, additionally, our Milwaukee tool set. Uh, I've got the the drill, impact driver, sawzall, side grinder, and this uh, nearly useless flashlight. And they too have five cell lithium packs. So that's a little more complicated. You can't just use these uh, uh, USB charge boards. 
uh, you can use a balance charger like this, where uh, this is the IMAX B6 Mini, by the way. Uh, the same one I blew up about a month ago. I, I like it so much I ordered another one. Um, but anyway, uh, it has cell taps on this connector on the side to connect to each of the cells in the pack and monitor and balance the cells as it charges them. So that's a great way to do it, but it, it's going to involve opening up the battery pack or the device and tapping a lead to each cell. And uh, I haven't bit the bullet on that yet for, for these bigger devices, um, just because I don't need to charge them that often and it's not such an inconvenience to have the, uh, the battery in its charger which stays connected and I can leave it driving down the road with the inverter on. So that's that. The same is true for things like our, uh, our drones, the big drones. Uh, they have a five or six cell lithium pack in those and DJI does make a portable 12 volt charger but it's a bit expensive in my opinion and uh, we can charge those sorts of things that are infrequently charged off of the, uh, the inverter. All right, next is 12 volt things. Uh, lots of consumer appliances that you buy have wall adapters. We're all familiar with them. And most of them convert 110 mains voltage to a lower, safer DC voltage. And uh, in my case, many of these things are 12 volts. This uh, Brother printer, for example, is a 12 volt power supply. And so I can just feed 12 volts right into here. Similarly, the power cord for the Dremel charger is a 12 volt barrel connector. And as luck would have it, they're the same 5 by 25 millimeter connector. And I recently got a new soldering iron. Our uh, old Weller plug-in 110 version has been a good workhorse, nice and small for traveling. But uh, Adam Savage recently did a one day build where he reviewed this TS100 12 volt soldering iron that's uh, programmable, temperature controlled, detects when you place it down and, and switches off. Uh, it's a really great soldering iron and it too uses 12 volt uh, power via the 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter barrel connector. So to connect all these 12 volt things I've standardized a cable that has a 5 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter barrel connector on one end and a XT60 connector on the other. These are my favorite go-to higher current connections. Uh, they're great because they have really sturdy brass terminals and they're polarized. So let me show you how this works. Uh, it plugs in to a 12 volt power supply or a 12 volt source. Uh, I have a connection underneath on our uh, breaker panel and electrical system which is located beneath my seat here. Uh, I'll show you in just a second. All right, around the uh, side compartment of the truck, I'll just show you quickly here. Uh, also, more of the same XT60 power tap connections, so I can plug this in right here. I've got one in the cab, and uh, that gives us lots of flexibility for where I can plug in and get some decent current 12 volt power. But I've also rigged up various other sources that I can tap power from. This is our little TAC Life. Uh, battery boost pack. I've shown it a little bit before. It's really great because it has a 12 volt output right here and you can connect uh, a barrel connector to it and then I have the mating connector for that here. Turn this on and then this is live and if I want to power up my soldering iron for example power. If I want to charge this thing, should be lit up. There we go. Lit up. Now I don't really love this holster. I was considering putting a uh, XT60 connector right in the butt of the dr Dremel. Might still do that, but for now the holster lives. Similarly, I can plug in the uh, little label printer if I need to, or uh, this uh, IMAX B6 Mini also has the 5 uh, millimeter by 2.5 millimeter connector. So I can plug that in. So kind of uh, jumping all over the place there, but the gist of it is this XT60 connector is the source and I can get 
12 volts from the Tac Life Boost Pack. I can plug it in beneath my seat here and get 12 volts. Uh, another mod I did was to our drill tool set. Uh, now I know you can buy from Milwaukee a attachment that you can slide onto a battery pack and it has a barrel connector and you can plug into that. Uh, I've repaired several of those because they have a circuit board that connects the contacts in here to the barrel connector and that circuit board has a thin little trace and if you try and put any significant amount of power through it it burns the trace right off the board and you have to buy them. So I went ahead and opened up our Milwaukee flashlight. It's fine but I don't really use it very much so I didn't uh, feel it was such a big sacrifice. So anyway, I opened it up and soldered a connector right to the contacts on the uh, battery. Now this is going to be coming out at 16 volts probably, but uh, this many of these devices will tolerate that. Uh, your results may vary, I won't get into it, but uh, now if I need to go see what I'm doing while soldering something, I can go and do that uh, with this battery pack as well. Uh, also my battery charger. I would never do this, charge a battery from a battery, but by having standardized connectors I could. Alright, so let me give you a little, uh, a little more detail on the soldering iron, uh, which is kind of the whole point I started making this video. Uh, this is the TS100. Uh, I saw it on Adam Savage's uh, YouTube channel. He was showing it off in a one day build where he made a little soldering cart, and uh, I thought it was a really cute little, yet powerful, uh, option to have. So as you can see it comes in two sections. The uh, cartridge heater element clips in the front. You can screw it down, although I haven't uh, done that yet, just because I don't need to. Uh, when you plug it in, it boots up, shows a software version, and prompts you to press the button to turn it on. So it stays cool uh, until you turn it on. On that uh, topic, it also has a USB Type B connection here, and you can update the firmware on it to uh, run newer firmware, although what comes stock is pretty amazing in my opinion. As you can see it has a little uh, OLED display here, and uh, you can cycle through various settings and adjust them. It shows the current temperature of the tip, 25 degrees room temperature, and 16.1 uh, volts coming off of that drill battery right now. Uh, you can do a factory reset, you can set the working temperature of 300, the uh, standby temperature, sleep time 180 seconds, it'll turn off automatically, uh, temperature steps of 10 degrees, off voltage at 10 volts, so it'll automatically turn off if your battery supply voltage is getting too low. Tons of features in there, uh, really handy, and, uh, and like I said, it doesn't turn on if you're not using it. So once this uh, times out here you can see it shows to press the button to start it up and then you can see the temperature climbing. And the thing I really love about it is it's fast. This thing heats up in a few seconds, 10 seconds on the first uh, the first go. I have it set to 300 C and it's already there. Obviously it's going to melt solder. So that's really handy and it's uh, it's slick because when you set it down, it uh, can it has an accelerometer in it, and it can tell you're not holding it anymore, and it uh, turns off. So yeah, that's the TS100 soldering iron. Uh, I was happy to have uh, received it because we've got a big project coming up here, uh, where I've uh, custom designed printed circuit boards uh, with uh, P-channel uh, hex FETs on there and that's going to replace all the relay boards in the truck that control the power to all the things and uh, so there's going to be lots of soldering in that project coming up and uh, I'd like to thank all of our channel members you can see them scrolling by here uh, these guys are legends uh, putting up a few bucks every month so that uh, we can do things like this and make great videos for you guys uh, and all we appreciate every subscriber uh, if you can't chip in that's cool uh, there's lots of YouTube channels I watch that I can't support either. Um, but for those guys who are chipping in a few bucks every month, uh, they're getting a little bit of extra perks. Uh, we've got a members only area on the website where you can uh, view how we built the truck, 
all the parts list for everything we used as well as uh, you know getting a shout out in the video like this and their names printed on the back of the circuit boards uh, so I'm trying to give them some added value for uh, their contributions which allow us to make these videos for free for all of you guys on YouTube so thanks so much to those guys thanks so much for watching see you next time